Many artists lived in the Greenwich Village area of New York. Two young women named Sue and Johnsy shared a studio apartment at the top of a three-story building. Johnsy's real name was Joanna. In November, a cold, unseen stranger came to visit the city. This disease, pneumonia, killed many people. Johnsy lay on her bed, hardly moving. She looked through the small window. She could see the side of the brick house next to her building. One morning, a doctor examined Johnsy and took her temperature. Then he spoke with Sue in another room. She has one chance in, let us say, ten, he said, and that chance is for her to want to live. Your friend has made up her mind that she is not going to get well. Has she anything on her mind? She, she wanted to paint the Bay of Naples in Italy some day, said Sue. Paint, said the doctor. Bosh! Has she anything on her mind worth thinking twice? A man, for example? A man, said Sue. Is a man worth... But no, doctor, there is nothing of the kind. I will do all that science can do, said the doctor. But whenever my patient begins to count the carriages at her funeral, I take away fifty percent from the curative power of medicines. After the doctor had gone, Sue went into the workroom and cried. Then she went to Johnsy's room with her drawing board, whistling ragtime. Johnsy lay with her face toward the window. Sue stopped whistling, thinking she was asleep. She began making a pen and ink drawing for a story in a magazine. Young artists must work their way to art by making pictures for magazine stories. Sue heard a low sound, several times repeated. She went quickly to the bedside. Johnsy's eyes were open wide. She was looking out the window and counting, counting backward. Twelve she said, and a little later, eleven, and then ten, and nine, and then eight, and seven, almost together. Sue looked out the window. What was there to count? There was only an empty yard and the blank side of the house seven meters away. An old ivy vine, going bad at the roots, climbed halfway up the wall. The cold breath of autumn had stricken leaves from the plant until its branches, almost bare, hung on the bricks. "'What is it, dear?' asked Sue. Six, said Johnsy quietly. "'They're falling faster now.' Three days ago there were almost a hundred. It made my head hurt to count them. But now it's easy. There goes another one. There are only five left now. Five what, dear? asked Sue. Leaves on the plant. When the last one falls, I must go too. I've known that for three days. Didn't the doctor tell you? Oh, I never heard of such a thing, said Sue. What have old ivy leaves to do with your getting well? And you used to love that vine. Don't be silly. Why, the doctor told me this morning that your chances for getting well real soon were, 
let's see exactly what he said. He said, the chances were ten to one. Try to eat some soup now. And let me go back to my drawing so I can sell it to the magazine and buy food and wine for us. You needn't get any more wine, said Johnsy, keeping her eyes fixed out the window. There goes another one. No, I don't want any soup. That leaves just four. I want to see the last one fall before it gets dark. Then I'll go, too. Johnsy, dear, said Sue, will you promise me to keep your eyes closed and not look out the window until I'm done working? I must hand those drawings in by tomorrow. Tell me as soon as you have finished, said Johnsy, closing her eyes and lying white and still as a fallen statue. I want to see the last one fall. I'm tired of waiting. I'm tired of thinking. I want to turn loose my hold on everything and go sailing down, down, just like one of those poor, tired leaves. Try to sleep said Sue. I must call Mr. Behrman up to be my model for my drawing of an old miner. Don't try to move until I come back.